Hi, my name is Jason DeKoff and I'm an assistant professor at Tennessee State University. Today I'm going to be demonstrating an activity that shows how ethanol can be produced from different substances to produce the ethanol that we use for biofuels. So this activity is a demonstration that's been adapted from one uh, created by Dr. Ken Newberry and it was originally called fermentation in a bag and this one we're going to be using some flasks and some balloons to show how ethanol is produced and how you can identify differences in different substances for ethanol production. The different types of materials that we're going to use include uh, two types of cereal. One is a regular uh, Cheerios and this has about one gram of sugar per serving. Uh, we've also got a higher sugar cereal that's Fruit Loops and that has about 11 grams per serving. We have uh, regular sugar that we're also going to look at and then also we've got switchgrass. And so the point of the, the activity is basically to show the reaction of how sugars can be converted into ethanol using yeast. And so the chemical reaction begins using carbohydrates or sugars. Uh, if we add yeast to that system, they will break down those sugars and they'll produce ethanol and carbon dioxide. And so the way that we're going to be able to compare these different types of materials is by measuring the amount of carbon dioxide that's produced. And we're going to capture that carbon dioxide in a balloon and we're going to be able to compare that between different materials. In essence, the material that produces the most carbon dioxide is also going to produce the most ethanol. So in that way we can see which material is going to be most beneficial for producing ethanol. And we'll talk a little bit about some of the differences and why those differences have occurred. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and start the demonstration. First off, I'm going to start with the cereals. Now, the cereals that we've got are, uh, they basically have larger particle sizes. And so because of that, we have to break them down a little bit more so that the sugars that are present are more available to the yeast that are there. So we're going to start off with basically taking some of the cereals and grinding it, I'm going to pour some of the cereal into a plastic bag and then I'm going to grind it uh, very gently using one of these plastic flasks that I have. And then I'm going to weigh out about eight grams of the cereal and place it in one of the flasks. Okay, now next uh, we've got the sugar and basically the sugar is already ground down into a, a fairly uh, small uh, amount of particles and so essentially all I need to do for this is to just weigh out eight grams and place it in its own flask. With the switchgrass, uh, I've actually already, um, the switchgrass has already been dried and it's already been ground down so it's a, a fine particle size and I've also already pre-weighed this so this already has 8 grams and so for this one I'm just going to basically open up the bag and pour it into its flask.
Okay, so now the next step, after we've added uh, eight grams of each of the different materials to their flasks, we're going to add the yeast. And so each flask is going to get a packet of yeast, and this is just uh, the type we're using is a, is a rapid rise, um, just the same type that you would use for baking bread because the process that we're using is relatively similar. And so each one of these packets has about seven grams of yeast. So like I said, each flask is gonna get its own packet. Okay, now we have the yeast and our different materials mixed together in each flask. And the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to add some water. Uh, we're gonna add just some, about 100 milliliters of warm water. And what this is going to do is it's gonna activate the yeast. Essentially, it's gonna wake them up and then they're going to be able to, to break down, find and break down that sugar and produce the ethanol and the carbon dioxide that, that we're hoping to, to measure using the balloon. So I'm gonna go ahead and add the water to each flask. And once, uh, once I've added the water, I'm going to, to swirl the flask and then put the balloon on top of the flask. And so the balloon, like I said before, is gonna capture that CO2 that's produced. And the flask that ends up with the largest balloon essentially produce the most ethanol because it had the most available sugars. Okay, so now we have all of the materials mixed and they have balloons. And so what we're going to do is we're going to come back in about 15 minutes and see the differences uh, between the different materials and the amount of carbon dioxide that has been trapped in each balloon. Okay, we're back and it's actually been 20 minutes uh, since we put the water in all of the flasks. And you can see we've got, we've got some balloons that are, that are filling up and some balloons that aren't. Um, first off, uh, the ones that aren't, obviously we had low amounts of sugar and so we're just not going to produce as much ethanol or carbon dioxide. Uh, same thing with the switchgrass. Now switchgrass doesn't have a lot of available sugar and so you can see that demonstrated by the balloon here. Um, but what researchers are doing is they're actually taking these plants and they're processing them more, and that allows for more sugars to be released. But it does have a higher cost and it does take more time to do that. Now, when we're talking about the available sugars for the sugar itself and for the uh, higher sugar cereal, the Fruit Loops, we've definitely got um, some CO2 production. And uh, it might look like the, the Fruit Loops balloon is a little bit larger than the straight sugar, which you wouldn't necessarily think is the case. Um, one of the factors that, that might be uh, causing this is because uh, we actually added the water to this a little bit sooner. And so this has had a little bit of extra time to, to react and, and produce more carbon dioxide than the sugar has. Also, uh, another, uh, another thing, there might just be plenty of sugar in here um, for the amount of yeast that we've added. And so 
it's not really going to be much of a difference between these two uh, because the yeast basically in both flasks have enough sugar to be happy and to produce uh, all the ethanol and, and, C and carbon dioxide that they can. And so with that, I, I hope you've learned a little bit more about ethanol production, how ethanol can be used uh, or how it can be produced from, from plants, and some of the differences in different types of materials that can be used to produce ethanol. If you have any further questions, please contact me using the information at the bottom of the screen. Once again, my name is Jason Dikoff, and I'm with T Tennessee State University. Thanks a lot.